How you doing, everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. Uh, I'm starting today on uh, my my part in uh, what's in your toolbox punches. I'm going to be making the, the roll pin punches. This is the one of the sample ones I had made. Uh, a little bit different. I'm going to make this tip a little bit shorter, or quite a bit shorter, actually. Uh, maybe, a, I think, about 100 thousandths I have on the drawing. So, But I'm, I'm going to be making these. Uh, that's a, and uh, just so you know, uh, Brian Block, who has a YouTube channel also, uh, and Chris Dumont. Actually, Chris does have a channel, but he doesn't do machining, but he, uh, he's a home shop machinist back east, and uh, he's uh, making some punches also. And he said he's filming it, so it'll be good. Um, I know Brian Block will shoot some footage and have some of that stuff up too. If you're not watching his channel, you ought to be. He's building a new shop, and, and uh, that'll be uh, exciting to see his new shop when he gets that done, renovating the barn. So, uh, thanks Brian and Chris, thanks Chris uh, for uh, helping out here and, and uh, getting the punches done. So in the next couple of weeks here, we'll uh, be getting them all done. Uh, Chris is, uh, uh, Brian, Brian's going to do the heat treat on them and uh, any grinding that might need to be done. And uh, we'll send them, so we'll send them all to Brian. Uh, he'll do all that part and then he'll be shipping them off. I'm going to try to have time here to make a nice box, a uh, wooden box to hold them. Uh, hold all the punches and uh, we'll get all these off to Brad Jacobs who's going to collect them all and he's going to go out and actually drive out with tools uh, around the first of November November, and uh, visit Keith and take all that stuff with him so we're uh, rushing to get this stuff done and uh, take you over to the bench there I'll show you the drawing and uh, I borrowed a knurling tool I should say I was able to borrow an Eagle Rock knurling tool from uh, Ray Canelia and we'll sh show you that real quick uh, I know you've all seen probably with those but they're really nice, and uh, so I'll be able to do some real nice knurls. Uh, uh, so thanks, Ray, uh, also, uh, for uh, uh, helping out with the punches and stuff. All righty, uh, let's get on with it. I'm going to be doing uh, some uh, roll pin punches. Uh, so here's a, here's a quick drawing of uh, uh, the ones I'm going to be making and a little dimension uh, chart uh, for each of the punches I'm going to make. So they're going to be knurled and I was able to, oh, that's Roscoe coming for a visit. Uh, I was able to borrow uh, Ray Cornelia's uh, Eagle Rock uh, knurler. Went down visited him yesterday and uh, I was going to spend like 15 minutes there and I spent four hours there or something like that. So oh, we had a good time. Uh, visiting there in the shop and uh, Phil Mundy ended up coming over and he had a little work to do uh, some parts he was working on so uh, we watched Tim Mill and Ray did a little filming there and we uh, had a good time down there uh, but anyway so I borrowed a Ray's uh, Eagle Rock I'll get first hand to try one of these out uh, for the punches uh, it should work out really nice ten times better than what I have uh, so uh, thanks Ray uh, for uh, let me borrow this and uh, we'll be getting these punches done here so uh, thanks again these are very very nice units uh, Over here on the lance lathe, I've got a half inch collet, if I see collet in, um, and the collet closer and stuff. Uh, these are, this is what I'm going to make be making the punches out of. This is a, a W1 drill rod. Uh, these are drops I had uh, from my friend who's a machinist who moved to shop. And uh, these are this is half inch material. I've already faced off and center drilled. Uh, the ends of them all. I just, you know, did did all, did all that, so they're ready to go in there, uh, in the chuck. Because I'm only going to be grabbing about a half an inch on the end here, and I should be able to get the uh, punch out of that distance there. And I'll have a nub on this end even, and uh, we should have enough material there to get the punches out of. Uh, it's a little bit extra work because they're so short. I wish I had a longer piece, but uh, I've got plenty of these, uh, so uh, that's what we're going to try to do. 
So this is my 5C collet. I just try to show you real quick. What I've done is you can see inside there, I put a depth stop in. So it goes in uh, approximately half an inch to hold the stock. That way, I'm not holding a lot, but when I have the forces of cutting and everything uh, pushing your stock basically into your collet, uh, it can't slip and fall back on it. And that way I'll have a tail stock on there pushing and keeping things tight uh, so we don't have any movement of the stock. Uh, this is a good way to deal with a short material uh, that you're only going to grab a little bit of. You know, you don't have that full length part of the collet, which is, you know, this much uh, grabbing it. Okay, I've got the collet back in there, and uh, so I can just slip. I have a mark about a half an inch there. So I've marked that about a half an inch, and that just goes right in against that stop that way. Then I can just lock the collet. Then the, uh, to, you know, your live center can go right in there and have a nice pressure on it. And as you cut, your forces are towards your chuck, towards your spindle, and uh, you have, won't have a tendency to slip on you or anything. So my plan is, uh, I need to neural only uh, 1.85 inches, uh, but I still need to turn it down. So I'm going to turn this whole piece down because all the rest of the diameters are smaller than the neural. So I'm going to turn it all down to the neural size. Then I'm going to come in and turn down each end but to uh, the next diameter, which uh, is, is 50 thousandths, smaller in diameter than the neural. And then I'm going to come in and neural that. And then we'll continue on uh, neuraling down uh, the other, I mean not neuraling. Uh, cutting down the other portions. I decided to start with the uh, largest, largest one. So first, uh, and that's uh, so this dimension is going to be 455. So what I'm going to do, 455. So I'm going to set my micrometer. Uh, I, that's, this is a nice feature of one of these micrometers. Uh, this one's a Mitotoyo. And uh, I'm going to set it to 455. There we go. And then I'm going to zero it out to incre in incremental mode. Now, when I measure something, it's going to tell me the difference in diameter right off the bat. Then I just have to divide that by two for a dial setting. So I'm 44.7 thousandths uh, uh, large right now. That's 44 and 7 tenths. Uh, so 44 thousandths large um, on it right now. So 22 on the dial total, and I'm at, I should be at dimension. I'm going to turn this at 1,200 RPM. With a feed rate of 10,500. We'll do this in a couple of cuts because I'm just going to zero that. I'll zero my dial. It's pretty close. I'm going to go in 12, and then the next cut would only have to be 10, hopefully. Uh, perfect finish there. Oh, yeah, that would be great. Give it a measure.
or actually the you know the, the neural is going to be down this in this area here so we'll just measure there so it's at 25 to go so another uh, 12 and a half Yeah, dialed in 12 and a half. You see what happened? Half a thousandths, large, five tenths. So that worked out really nice, <laughs> and uh, so we're good. Now we're going to set the dial up. Uh, I'm going to set the dial up on the on the ways here to uh, measure our distances and such. I'm going to also change. Uh, I'm going to change this uh, DNMG. No, the, the other one was a MNMG, uh, WNMG 432 uh, insert. Uh, it's actually the same one I use to make dovetail cutters with. Uh, this is a DNMG uh, 432, actually. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's 432. Yeah, so uh, I've gotten a lot of comments lately about inserts and things like that. And, and uh, you know, I'm not... I'm not an expert on inserts for by far. I'm far from that. Uh, but, you know, the, the letters uh, designate the shape. Uh, you know, pretty, uh, that's what they do to uh, tell you the shape of the uh, and geometry of the uh, insert. And the numbers uh, tell you more about the size of the insert. So uh, that's, that's kind of a rough, that's a good way to think about it, an easy way. And... Uh, so this is a uh, this is a 432. So uh, the four is the uh, inscribed circle. If I drew a circle inside that diamond, uh, it would be a half inch. That's four sixteenths, and because it's the four designates how many sixteenths of an inch. So four sixteenths is a half an inch, and so this is a four, and then uh, the three is the tolerance, and the two is the radius. Uh, I'm just skipping by the three, to, but the the two is the radius of your tip, 64 or seven inch. Uh, so this is a two. So we got the dial it set up, and uh, I'm just going to touch on the end. Now I'm going to lose. I, I should talk about that. I, I center drilled this, so I'm going to lose. Uh, uh, you know, not not quite a half inch. Maybe I'll measure that. So I'm going to measure the depth of that hole while it's in lathe. I'm going to use the highly sophisticated technique of Allen wrench and Sharpie and stick that Allen wrench down in the hole, Sharpie that, and giving me a nice sharp edge there. And I'll just measure that off. Use a precision ruler. <laughs> and we got, let's see that, 3 sixteenths of an inch. So I'm going to leave a quarter of an inch, make it easy on myself. I'm going to, I'll leave a quarter of an inch extra. So I add 250 to whatever my dimension is. Uh, so it actually worked out really nice. Uh, uh, with the quarter inch and the uh, striking end of the punch, it's uh, one inch. Dial indicator on the ways here. All right, one inch. And I'm going to... Give it a little more. Um, then I'm going to go down 1.85 inches. Mm -hmm. 
Those are the two uh, major marks I need to know right now. So I'm going to turn this diameter down to uh, 0.405. We'll do the same on the dial it on the on the micrometer. Set it for 0.405. Oh, Fifty thousandths. Perfect. Uh, exactly, and that's what it should be. I'm going to take 15 right off the bat. Three to go. I'm going to slow the feed rate down. This this insert will yeah give a little better finish here if we go slower. money only four tenths under perfect now we'll come down and we're, we'll do the same on uh, at the bottom here I'm just gonna work my way in a little bit Rock it back and forth. Eight tenths over, yeah, we're good. It's good. So we're uh, really we're ready to knurl that. We have our full strength, uh, pretty much of the material still. I got the knurler in there. I loosened it up, you know, so it's open, so I can roll over my piece now. Uh, just for a note here, uh, these knurls don't have beveled edges. Uh, I'm going to show you. This knurl, this is my knurler. I'm going to show you this. You see how those edges are beveled on the knurls? Right? Now, having a beveled edge on the knurl allows you to run off the edge of your knurling spot and come back on nicely. Uh, these ones aren't beveled. Even though I have a small chamfer there on the end of the where I'm which helps uh, these ones aren't so I'm not sure how well these are gonna go on there if I run off the knurl um, we're gonna find out um, how that's gonna work but so I've centered the knurl up over the center line of the piece just by eye now I've never used one of these and the instructions are kind of shady uh, a little sketchy but we're going to put it on there, give it a little tension, and uh, see how it goes. Now, I read the instructions, and I, I 
just a little bit sketchy on them, but not too much. Um, but I mean, I've done knurling before, so it's you know, it's pretty. Really, it's pretty simple. You gotta get it, you want to make sure it's square to your you know, the holder square. Okay, lots of lube they say. Flood it. So we'll uh, keep it flooded with oil. I'm not going to let it run off the end. I want to keep going in the same direction uh, just because of backlash and stuff. So, because if you get even your backlash, could screw them up. So, we'll see how coming back over and rolling back into it. Like I said, because I don't know how well these are going to um, mesh. Um, I, I didn't really do any practicing. <laughs> Oh, that looks great. That's great. A couple, just two passes were, were good, and uh, I like that. Let's go a little farther. Well, uh, that knurler works extremely well, nice and sharp. I had to change the knurls to a finer knurl. Uh, when I borrowed it from Ray, and uh, let me tell you, those pins, uh, the carbide pins in the uh, knurls, that hold the knurls in, and they were a bear to get out. I mean, I was uh, almost didn't change them because they were so hard to get out. I had to use the press and stuff, and actually I read online, a lot of people have problems getting those out. Let me tell you, they are a bear. So, <laughs> uh, I didn't even put them back in all the way. Just so I could get them back out again, it's not so hard. Anyway, that that came out uh, really nice. Uh, just so you know, uh, we're using a 33 pitch uh, neural. Nice kind of a fine neural, so it's not too hard on your hands. And that's a uh, that looks like it's just perfect. I'm going to turn down a quarter of an inch here, down to uh, three, uh, 302. Uh, take about a hundred thousandths off of this, 304, uh, and. Uh, so that I have uh, this diameter reduced because I need to cut a, a chamfer on the end for the striking end and then the rest of the the very end of the chamfer I'll cut on the other lathe uh, when we chuck it back up over there uh, for the second operation of, of getting rid of the end nub and and getting the end chamfer on uh, but we'll do this first chamfer but I need to turn this down uh, a little bit Now we'll cut the we'll get set up to cut the little chamfer on the end, 15 degree angle. 